Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to be doing my final trying new makeup before the Sephora sale ends. It's Sunday now and I'm going to try to edit and upload this today. I hope I can get it done. But I really wanted to test out the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer. I know a lot of you were curious about that. And then I also want to give a try to the Givenchy Rose Perfecto Lip Balm. I have some thoughts on that. I also have this INN Beauty Project Face Glaze. I purchased this a while back. I'm not sure if I've shown it on camera, but it's a really glowy primer. I also want to test out the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush in the deeper shade that I picked up in my haul. And I may also use one of these from ColourPop and Peeps. How adorable is this? I may throw one of these on if it goes with the look. I also do have the Lip Balm lipsticks from ColourPop. And then I have the Dior lipstick. It really just depends on, you know, where my look goes. I still want to continue to test out the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer and Highlight Palette. So I'll continue to play with that. And then I do have this concealer or corrector that I purchased. It went viral on TikTok from Rose and Ben. And this is the Exa Beauty High Fidelity Color Corrector in Pink. She applied this over her concealer. So we're going to play around. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe. And if you enjoy just trying new makeup videos or really just any Sephora content, just new makeup reviews, recommendations, please give this video a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I usually start on my eyes, but I do want to try out this Givenchy lip balm again. This is breaking my heart because I did try this just once. I really just threw it on before bed and just to get a feel for it. And it tasted like, like soapy flowers to me. I didn't try this one, but it, I think it was like the milky nude one. Now I'm hearing a lot of you in my comments are having the same experience. And then I'm hearing, you know, a lot of people love them. Even just other creators are recommending them. And even the Sephora reviews seem overwhelmingly positive. The packaging is an A plus, like how freaking beautiful is this? But what sold me on this was it actually had pigment. I wasn't really interested to be honest when I first saw it because I thought they were all just gonna be like sheer, but they do have pigment. And the one I wanna try is 001, which is like the pink and it has like, it's like your chemistry and it goes basically, usually these go to like a hot pink or a bright pink. For me, I like that, so this is perfect for me. I know a lot of people don't like that. When I smell this, it's a it's a floral scent, which is pretty standard for a really high-end makeup. Something about the taste. So I wanna try it again, and if I can't handle it, I'm gonna have to send it back. This one goes on pretty sheer, just from like my swatching. But I think it does sort of stain into like a pink. And it's a very thin formula, so in terms of like comparing it to, let's say like my Too Faced, I could feel this is not gonna be like super hydrating in my opinion. This is something I think you're really paying for the beautiful packaging and also just the color. So this is not gonna be like a deep hydration sort of situation. Now when I'm wearing this right now, I'm not noticing a taste yet. So I will keep you updated as we go through the video, but I actually am gonna go into the Gemini 2 palette. You guys are probably screaming, don't do it, because I had like a mental breakdown in my last video. But I really want to just use lighter shades and not go into the deep realm this time. I'm gonna stay more in this area. I'm trying to think. I might start out with this shade called Ladylike. So I'm just going to blend this. These are so pigmented, like even the lighter shades. And I actually didn't think the formula was bad. I thought that they definitely improved the shimmers. I just really had a bad day. So I'm realizing after reading my comments, and this is something I've known for a while. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody that left like a nice comment. I, I have had struggles with just body image, uh, I don't even know what it would be called, like not not even just body, like face, like just how I look. I have horrible body image. I always have since I've been younger. I've had some issues with self-esteem and uh, it's just tying my entire worth to being beautiful. And if I'm not beautiful or I don't feel beautiful, then it's like I'm not worth anything. Literally, I remember, this is very personal to me, but I always love to open up with you guys just because it's life and this is, you know, part of me is sharing my life with you. Maybe you've gone through something similar, but I remember going to a psychiatrist when I was in high school and I was really struggling and acting out. Basically, 
you know, being told that I have like severe just body and self-esteem problems or issues and I tie literally all of my worth to the way that I look and I can remember that and I, I remember being literally like 15 or 16 so it's something that I have struggled with and then when I went to a therapist I believe last year for just eating issues disordered eating uh and then just did like a whole you know checkup or whatever basically it was told that I have like severe body image like I have like there was we did like testing or whatever and there was like a scale I, I can't remember the exact numbers but I literally had like a score of like a three out of like 25 in terms of how I feel about my body image and how I feel about the way I look so I am hard on myself I don't know why I can't stop it I think I, I'm always on hard on myself I always have been uh, but I think when I'm on camera it's almost like this fear of like now, not only do I not feel good about myself, I'm not happy with what I've done. I don't feel that I, you know, have have made myself look pretty or whatever it is. And so then now I have to edit that, which is like watching back me struggling. And then I post it and then it's like, I'm embarrassed. Like, I, I you know, I could do better than this kind of thing, you know? Or yeah, I don't know. I've just had issues. and And I feel like a comment I see a lot recently is don't be so hard on yourself and I'm I don't know how to fix that because I just am I've always been that way you know like if if my husband or my family is like you're so beautiful but I'm like no I'm ugly I'm fat I'm ugly like I've always just been that way it doesn't matter what anyone says it's like how I feel about myself I need to be kinder to myself I don't know how to do that you know it's just and then I did have some personal things going on the other day I've, I've been very overwhelmed I have a trip coming up, like very shortly, trying to find um, like a boarding place that I trust for Roscoe. You know, just there was a lot of personal things going on. So I know that I was really just kind of down in that video. I was rushing. I just, there was so much going on. So I was just really having a tough time. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for all the comments. And I'm not going to apologize because I literally about five times almost just said I'm sorry for being hard on myself. That's like the point. So. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I definitely have some uh, issues internally that I've, I've struggled with literally for over 15 years and I don't know how to fix it because it's like once I get in my mind that I am not worthy and I'm not pretty and I don't look good and I'm not good enough, nobody can change that. It's like I just struggle with being kind to myself if I don't feel that I've done a good enough job. So. I was literally about to say I'm sorry for always saying sorry, but I, I can totally understand that it probably does get annoying. And it's something that I'm recognizing after reading those comments. Like I really need to stop apologizing for literally having not the best makeup day. I need to stop worrying about being perfect. Yeah, I just need to stop doing that to myself. It almost makes me emotional, but yeah, reading those comments, I almost felt bad, like, maybe if you're new here or you don't, you don't understand, I feel like I'm getting emotional. Maybe you're thinking, like, why is she, like, making a big deal out of nothing or why is she, like, dragging this on and making this so dramatic? It's truly something I struggle with and I need to be kinder to myself because I, I'm reading these comments of people just being so sweet and so genuine and then I also, I started, like, reflecting like it's almost like I've lost hope of like I don't think I can fix it I think it's just a part of of who I am uh and I just don't know how to get out of my own way anyways I'm not gonna make this a cry fest I just wanted to say I appreciate you guys who were kind in the comments so I'm gonna go in next to sweetheart which is this pink shade just because I think I want to play with one of those ColourPop super shocks these are just so pigmented like look at that pigment so I want to know from you guys, what is your favorite thing that you got from the Sephora sale that you picked up if you shopped it? What is your like standout, just favorite new item? I have quite a few. And then I've also had some that didn't work for me. And then just to softly blend everything, I am going to go into Bella, which is that light shade. So I'm just going to use this pretty much just all over to blend. I want a smidge more depth, so I am going to take this shade right here and just reinforce that halo. And then I do want to put one of those ColourPop shadows in the middle. They just look so cute. 
So ColourPop has a new collaboration with Peeps. They sent this over. The packaging is absolutely adorable. It's basically just Super Shocks and then those like bombs. So I didn't really know what shade to use, but I thought maybe this pink would be cute. Uh, this is just called pink. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna match. Okay, let me, let me brainstorm for a second here. So because I feel like that pink's just not gonna work, I'm gonna try orange. I feel like this would be the best. I thought this purple was pretty, but I don't know if that would go either. So let's swatch this. The Super Shocks are really beautiful. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna be the best bet. Uh, but they're just one of those you kind of like have to remember to use. I never remember to reach into them. I'm more of like a palette girl, I guess. I might actually incorporate the purple just like on the outer corners. We will see. I'm going to try to take a little bit of this purple shade. It's called Lavender. Let me swatch it for you. Really, really pretty. I feel like it's just something a little bit different. Now I'm sort of wondering if I just wanna put the purple over it. <laughs> I might just go that way. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this Love Sick to just sort of blend over the edges. So I did my wing and applied some lashes. I used the Glamnetic in Shameless and then I did use the liner from them. Uh, I do think you can get the liner on Sephora now, so if you're interested, I will link it. And I know that you can get some of their lashes on there, not all of them, they have like select styles. So now I want to start on the base. I'm gonna go in with my Freck moisturizer first. I probably should get a new one, honestly, because I've literally been using this forever. I'm just gonna apply this pretty much everywhere. I don't go super heavy in my T-zone. Try to like stay more kind of up here. And then I also have this product that I purchased a while back and I don't think that I ever demoed it. I may have once and I can't recall. This is the In Beauty Project Face Glaze. So this is really just a glowy primer. So you can see it has like a nice glow to it. So I'm gonna take that much and just put it on the high points of my face. So I like the Rare Beauty Illuminating Primer a lot. This one's definitely I would say a little bit more hydrating. The Rare Beauty almost like dries down. So I think that's a good one for like oily combo skin. So this is the glow that it gives. It's really nothing like crazy. Again, I used a very little amount. Uh, if you had dry skin or you really like glow, glow, you could probably go in heavier. It says it's supposed to hydrate, give you glow, and smooth the skin. I mean, anything with a glow really doesn't smooth the skin, so you know what primer I'm gonna use for my T-zone. None other than my Hourglass Vanish Airbrush. I just, honestly, this is my favorite. It is just my favorite. I really feel like it smooths my pores the best. So before I demo the Rare Beauty, I am gonna take a little bit of concealer. I just have a couple areas because it is that time of the month that just make me feel not so great. So let's dive into the new Rare Beauty Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer with SPF 20. So this is described as a light coverage with a radiant finish, a flexible tinted moisturizer that blurs the skin with glowy light to medium coverage while hydrating and protecting from the sun. So I got the shade 30N. They sent me 13C, which was like super light with a cool undertone which works for me when I have no tan on, but I do have a tan most of the time, just like a self tan. So this is the one that I picked up. The packaging is really nice. It really is on brand for them. So you squeeze off the top and then it kind of reminds me of like Glossier. So this is supposed to be neutral. It's looking a little warm, so I hope it's going to work for me. But I'm going to start with a uh, sponge. I'm gonna use my little ghost sponge. Literally, I'm like running so low on all of my tools. I have to clean my brushes and sponges tomorrow. I'm switching to a brush. This is just the It Cosmetics. Okay, I definitely feel like this is light coverage. Let's try this side with just a brush. I really can't tell which application I prefer. So this is kind of an initial application. They say light to medium, I would say definitely is light. You can see like if I zoom you in, this is why I need coverage because my nose, you can see like the red, almost like pores peeking through because it's not covering it. 
and just like even the side of my face and like my chin, it looks very, I don't know, like it's sitting on top of the skin. So I'm also noticing like this dry crustiness around my mouth area. It's like heavy and dry and cakey. And even just like my nose, like the slightest touch and it just like moves. Which, you know, there are some tinted moisturizers that I really love, like the Beauty Blender Bounce. I also love the YSL um, Bare Look. I also love the NARS Tinted. I can already tell just from this first impression, this is just not going to work for my skin type. Even spot concealing, this is just looking streaky and blotchy on me. Something strange is going on on my chin area. It's like blotching off, and I'm like, what? Like this circle right here will not cover. I considered wiping it off, but I'm just gonna see what happens here. I wanna go in with my LYS concealer because I do like this and it's more of like a hydrating formula. I feel like I'm striking out recently. I'm just gonna blend this out. I feel like that Rare Beauty is gonna be great for people that literally just like love barely their makeup and that don't really have like acne or redness to cover. Now that I've applied my concealer, I do want to try this from a brand I've never tried. I saw Rose and Ben demo this on TikTok and it looked so good. It's a pink under eye corrector. They had all different colors. I love the Pixie. I like the Charlotte Tilbury, the NARS, but this is much more pink than any of the other ones I tried. So I thought that we would just attempt it. She applied it like over her concealer. So I am just going to go ahead and go for it. I know everybody's like going nuts about like pink powder right now. So are we seeing a difference? I'm almost wondering if that just like lifted my concealer. Let me try a little bit on this side. Now you could do this before, but she did it after, which is not typically what uh, I would have done, but it looked great. You guys can tell me if that brightened. I don't necessarily know if I'm seeing a brightness. I didn't use too much of it, but I don't want to go overboard. So I'll continue to try this out and see if I notice any like brightening aspects. But I actually am going to go in next with a cream bronzer just because this is so hydrating. I really want to layer this down first and I know that I like this formula. This is from Refai and it's in the shade Tan. This is just one of those really easy formulas to use. So I just take some on my sponge and I do the exact same thing that I do with any cream uh, blushes. The only thing about these shades is they're very warm. But this is one of the more user-friendly formulas, so is like the Rare Beauty, but they're both very warm, so it's not going to be any like contouring. It's going to be just bronzing. So now I want to add on some of this Laura Mercier blush. Usually I would put these over powder. I have a feeling, honestly, if you want me to be frank, I hate this Rare Beauty tinted moisturizer on my skin. It's just not for me. It looks really, really patchy and streaky up close. Like, I feel like it's good on my forehead, but that's the area where I don't really need coverage. And it's just looking really bad over here. So I'm afraid to powder and then try to apply this on top. So I'm actually going to use this before I powder. So this is the Tinted Moisturizer Blush and Parasol. I picked up Southbound to start with and it was very sheer. So I did order a, another shade that was a little bit more punchy. I actually feel this will go really nicely with the eye look we have. And this one has a little sheen to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply as I normally would which is basically just putting it on my hand and then I'm gonna take my sponge and I wanna see if this has a little bit more punch to it and I don't have to use quite as much product because the Southbound shade really, I had to use quite a lot just cause I feel like these are more of a sheer formula. Okay, something strange is happening here. I feel like this is applying super patchy. This is not looking good. I actually preferred this formula from my first impression over powder. I'm gonna try to build this up. I honestly think it's the, it's the skin tint. The foundation or the tinted moisturizer lifting when I apply the blush. Are you seeing this? 
All right, I'm back. I had to remove that. I actually showed my husband and then I sent pictures to Cheryl and she was like, oh my God, my skin actually looked better with nothing on. Like I would rather wear nothing than wear this. The patching and lifting, I just can't. Something about it just didn't gel with my skin. So I went ahead and applied my Armani Luminous Silk with a little bit of the NAR Soft Matte. And then I changed the concealer as well because I do wanna really give this a try. I felt like the Rare Beauty was looking so bad on my skin that nothing was working. Like the Refi usually works with every product. It blends effortlessly. So when that's patching, everything's patching. I just felt like I couldn't even review anything else because it was throwing everything off. So I want to give this another try. I'm just going to put a little bit right here with maybe more of like a matte concealer. So I do feel like it's somewhat like lifts concealer. I would probably apply this underneath. Yeah, do you see that right there? It's like you have to use the lightest hand. This formula feels quite like thin, like it's not heavy or drying, but I do wonder how it would work like under. So I'll try that in another video. This side looks okay, but it's like this weird patch on this side. So I set my face and now I wanna move in to the Fenty Beauty palette. I wanna give this more of a chance just because it's not really working for me in terms of the shades. This is way too light and these are a little deep for me. So it's a little bit harsh on me. I'm going to attempt with a Makeup by Mario brush, which I think this is like his bronzer and blush brush. I'm really going to try to be light-handed and I'm going to go into Private Island right here. So I just want to really be very like soft with it because I feel like it looked quite heavy when I tried it before. And I love, I think it's called Shady Biz. So I feel like this is just quite finicky for me. Like I would really have to spend the time to build it up. So that definitely applied a little bit better than the first initial time I used it. The colors in this palette just aren't suited for my skin tone, which is like totally fine. So I'll probably use it more so on the eyes. I wanna give another shot to the Laura Mercier blush, really to tell me if this shade in particular was lifting or if it was all the Rare Beauty or the mixture. I'm a little nervous, I have to say, just because that did not look good. But I didn't have lifting with the first shade that I tried, so I am going to put some on the back of my hand. I put quite a bit, and I'm just going to use the Stands Out sponge. All right, so I zoomed you in a little bit. Ooh, something's weird here. Maybe it is this shade. I don't know, it's hard to tell, I'm so scared. Okay, so even with the minimal amount that I applied of this, it's, it's lifting, I can see it, so I'm going to not do that. Let's just move away from this because something weird is going on. It's a shame because the color is really beautiful, but something about this shade in particular, I can see it start to lift. It's very subtle, but if I keep tapping, it's, it's just gonna lift. So I'm gonna go uh, back over that. Yeah, I'm seeing like a little patchiness there. So maybe it was a mixture, I would say that blush is not the easiest to work with. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a blush that I actually recommended in the sale. I haven't demoed this actual shade, but Proud Pink is so gorgeous. It has like a sheen to it. And these have a glow to them. I don't know if you can see. It like gives me a glow immediately. It's almost like you don't even need a highlighter. I switched uh, sponges because for some reason there's like little black fuzzies on this and it was getting literally like in my blush. Today is another day where, you know, things are just a little bit more complicated, but. I am gonna go into the Fenty Beauty palette and just use the highlighter a little bit on the top of my cheekbones. It's not my favorite formula, but it's pretty, it's just not my favorite. I typically prefer like the Dior Backstage. I just like the ones that aren't as powdery. So let's go ahead and finish off with lips. I'm gonna use this Refi Beauty Lip Liner in Rosewood. I like this color and I feel like it'll go well with the pinky tones that we have because it has a little bit of pink in it. These are now available at Sephora as well, so I'll link them, but I did pick up one more shade which was like a deeper pink. For lipstick, I have a couple options. This is really cute. This is the Glowing Lip from the Peeps and ColourPop collaboration. I'm assuming it's just like a really pretty, yeah, that might be pretty. It's like pretty 
coral shade. And then I also have this Dior uh, Addict Lip Balm. I feel like this is pretty similar, not as bright. So this is the Dior and this is the ColourPop. Maybe I will, let's start with the Dior. It feels really comfortable, it's very thin. So I feel like that's pretty. I'm gonna take a little bit of the ColourPop. The ColourPop seems a little more pigmented. Like slightly. All right guys, so here's my finished makeup look, trying new products. It was another wild ride, but I feel like we got there. Another day, another bun. I just don't have the patience to do my hair right now. So let's go over the products and my first impressions, starting out with the Givenchy Balm. First of all, packaging is beautiful. I love the pink tint on this color. I love a lip stain. So for me, I knew this was gonna be something I'd enjoy. Today, the scent didn't bother me nearly as much. I would say maybe once while I was getting ready, I noticed like a little slight taste of that floral, but it was nothing like the other day where I actually put it on and was like, ugh, like I felt, I had to wipe it off immediately. I just felt like I literally put soap in my mouth. So I'm not sure if it's just like that certain shade is more heavily scented. I really don't know what happened there. I'll probably hang on just to this one in the pink because I like it enough to leave like a nice little stain and give me a little bit of mild hydration. But if you're looking for heavy, heavy hydration, this is not gonna do it. This is more so like a beautiful product that gives you a little bit of a tint. And just be mindful that the scent turns into a taste, which can be unpleasant. <laughs> Moving on to the Melt Gemini 2. I already touched on how beautiful the packaging is. And as I said in my previous video, I would stay in this realm most days, which is what I did today. These are super pigmented, lots of depth. They blend beautifully. This is just a really deep palette. There's no light shimmers in here, so if you do choose to use one of the metallics, you're gonna get a very deep, smoky look. I think it's beautiful, and I do think they reformulated because I feel like everything blended beautifully, and I know Melt has been inconsistent in the past. The shimmers are not chunky or flaky in this one at all. It's just a very deep, rich color story, so you have to really like those deep tones and a lot of mattes, but overall, the quality is great. Moving on to the face glaze from In Beauty Project. I like it. I feel like it's comparable to a lot of the glowy primers. I like that it's not super thick and emollient. It's not as like dry down as the Rare Beauty, and it's not quite as shimmery as that but it doesn't have a thick consistency to where it's making, you know, my texture look bad or it's heavy on the skin. I feel like my foundation looks pretty good <laughs> now that I changed it to the one that I like, and I did use this, and I feel like everything's looking nice. I use this type of product more so just like on my cheekbones and on my forehead, so this is a yes for me. It's something I bought a while ago, and I just can't remember if I showed you guys. Well, we had so many mishaps in this video, I almost forgot the Kaja. Honestly, I really, didn't love my first impression of these when I used this on my cheeks the other day and then when I demoed it today. I'm gonna have to keep trying, but with so much makeup on the market that is just phenomenal quality, this is just not something that I feel like is going to change my mind enough for me to recommend it to you guys. I just think something about this formula is a little bit iffy with powder, so if you don't set your face or your you know base on your eyes, this may work for you, but for someone like me that does like to set most of the time, I probably would just pass on those. I'll continue to try them, but I'm not wowed. Now in terms of the Rare Beauty Tinted Moisturizer, just didn't work for me. Doesn't mean it won't work for you. It definitely is light coverage, so I do agree with that. It's radiant. I didn't feel that it was thick or heavy, so it didn't feel like really thick, heavy, and gunky. It just really was lifting, patching, smearing, transferring, just not flattering on me. It ended up just looking very streaky, very blotchy. I do have a lot of redness, I do have active breakouts, and I do have scarring. So for me, light coverage usually doesn't work for me, but I will say there are some that I mentioned before, like the YSL Bare Tint. So it's not impossible, but this one is just a hard pass for me. I actually felt like my skin looked better with nothing on. Like, I would rather wear nothing than wear this. I just don't like it at all for me personally. So if you have similar skin to mine, you have similar, you know, redness or acne, you know, combo skin, whatever it is, texture, 
I just don't know if you'd like that. Now, could I use that mixed in with a matte foundation? Yeah, maybe. But for me, there again, there's so many phenomenal formulas on the market right now that this is just probably something I'll never try again. Of course, I still love the LYS concealer. I think anything that I put on top of that Rare Beauty was just looking a hot mess. But this is just a really nice medium coverage, hydrating, skin-like, concealer. I feel like if you have dry under eyes, you want something that's going to go with glowy, radiant foundations, but can also be built up. I think you'd like this. And this I'm perplexed about, the EXA color corrector. I'm going to have to try it a little bit more. I do think that I see some sort of brightening, but I'd like to try this underneath concealer. I just wanted to do what Rose and Ben did, so I'll have to keep trying this out. I'm not like ruling it out by any means. I just want to try it underneath and see if it really brightens my under eye. The ColourPop Super Shock, I think is cute. I feel like the tones really didn't go with the Melt palette, but again, sometimes when I'm doing these trying new makeup videos, there's a lot going on, and I have like an influx of cream blushes, let's say, but I don't have a lot of other products. So I thought that I would just, you know, try out this formula because the Melt palette doesn't have any light shimmers in there, but the tones on these are really not, you know, on the same level as the Melt, but I feel like I made it work. It's a typical super shock. It's not like, you know, one of my favorite formulas ever, but they are very pretty if you like really glittery metallic lids. Moving on to the Fenty Beauty palette, I had a much better experience today. I feel like I had to really just build it up. Be careful. The shades in here are just a little bit deep for me. So using a fluffier brush, a light hand, and really building it worked better for me. You guys can let me know down below, but I do feel like everything's looking a lot more seamless than it did before. And the highlighters in here, they're just okay. Nothing, you know, to write home about. I think it's cute. I do still want to try it on the eyes. It's just one of those that I don't really think works perfectly for my skin tone, but I feel like if you're more, you know, like medium tan, tan deep, I think this would really work for you. I absolutely adore the Huda Beauty Cream Blush Sticks. I feel like these are being slept on. There's so much kind of dropping at once. I feel like these kind of slid under the radar. If you like baby doll cheeks like I do and you like a blush similar to the Patrick Ta in the sense that the creams really kind of bring your face to life, but even a little bit more dewy and emollient, you will like these. There's something about these that you almost don't need a highlighter. They just kind of like give you that, like look at that glow. Of course, I did apply a little bit of highlighter, but you guys saw it gives you this like beautiful glow and it goes over powder if you apply the way I do with a very light hand. So I really love these. My favorite has to be the Proud Pink. Disappointed that I can't recommend this Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Blush in the shade Parasol. The one I tried before Southbound I didn't have problems with, but I really had to use a lot and build it up, which I really don't have the patience for, to be honest. Again, so many beautiful formulas. You know, I can't waste my time with something that's not really wowing me. This is not a forgiving shade or formula. I don't know if it's the shimmer or the purple tone in here, but just patchy with both the rare, and then I felt it lifting my powder when I tried it again. So for me, this is gonna be a pass. Sadly, I'm probably gonna have to return this shade. Still loving the Refi lip liners. They really do wear a super long time. They are more on the dry side. So if you're expecting something super creamy, this is not gonna be for you. This is something that's really gonna hang on. And I love the tones so much so that I've already purchased three and I got another one. So this shade in Rosewood surprised me because I usually do go for like a really deep brown lip liner, but I kind of like this middle of the road, you know, pinky rose tone. I quite liked the Dior lipstick I picked up. Of course, it's bougie. Did I need it? No. I mean, honestly, these are pretty comparable if you compare in terms of the way that they look, the formula. So this is the Dior, which is super expensive, and then you have the ColourPop. I really like this shade. I know a lot of people don't love certain shades that I do. Like, I love, like, a cream, you know, peach like this or a coral that's like really bright. I love pinks, really just anything like baby doll. I don't know what it is, but I just love it. And I actually really like the formula on this and the color. It's bright without being too much. So both of those were a win for me. All right, guys, so that is everything for this trying new makeup. I hope it was helpful even if we did have some struggles. I feel like I kept my cool a little bit more today because I'm not rushed and I'm like, okay, just take it off and let's move on. So, but I really wanted to 
to demo it because I did have quite a few of you asking me to do so. So hopefully the demo helped in some way or another. I will link all the products I used today down below in my description box in case you wanna check anything out. The sale ends Monday, April 11th. So if you wanna shop, I highly recommend getting your orders in before the sale ends. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about these products, the demo, even the Rare Beauty. I really wanna know what you guys see because sometimes I'm really just seeing myself in the viewfinder or my mirror and then when I watch footage back, some things can look a little bit different, but I'm curious your thoughts. If you're new here, I hope you subscribe and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.